Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. How's how's everything at your end? I hope you and your family have been safe from the virus. Yes, yes, we have been trying to keep safe. I did get COVID um oh, really? in December. Yeah, yeah, my family did get it, but um we're just trying to keep safe. I mean, as much as you can. I think the COVID fatigue is really setting in for a lot of people now also. So yes. Yeah, masks, vaccinations, sanitizers, <laughs> all the good yes. stuff. Yes. That it's a I think I, I I would feel strange now if I if I if there comes a time when we don't have to wear masks. <laughs> so. I hope that time comes soon. I, yes. I hope so too. So anyway, uh, first I would really like if you could just give us a small introduction of yourself mm-hmm. uh, so our audience get to know a little about you. Sure, sure. So um, I'm Mahizera Hussain and uh, I head a software house in Lahore by the name of Fire Rivers Technologies. I've been working here for the past almost 11 years now. Um, we do... Um, multiple kinds of development. We have uh, offshore clients uh, and we are also starting uh, some products of our own. So uh, we've done it all from enterprise applications to mobile phone applications for all different platforms. Um, And now we're actually more focused on machine learning and AI and data science um, because that is actually what my background is as well. I'm a mathematician. Um, And I've done a master's in operations research. Yes. So um, I think very interesting and exciting times ahead. Yes. Uh, now, even I, I wasn't the kind who took a lot of interest in technology, but now even I've started, you know, uh, going through the updates and I've started getting to know more about web development and app development. <laughs> All right. So I was saying that uh, you can't do anything without technology anymore you've got to be up to date now even I have somebody like I was never into you know uh, being up to date with I was not tech savvy at all but now it's nothing you can do without it so very true very true I think all verticals pretty much have some sort of tech component now going forward yes I mean whether you're looking at manufacturing or you're looking at finance um, obviously I mean in the tech sector though yes mm. and then you know also even our government networks. now i mean yes yes for the longest there, there time it was all registers and copies now they're also moving towards websites and online payments finally <laughs> So. Yes, there, there is a lot of scope, I think, for us as a country also yeah. uh, to make use of our data um, and to, you know, uh, use it to actually yes. make better decisions for our future. Yes, of course. So uh, my uh, first question to you was that, you know, there's not a lot of women in the tech industry even now. Uh, I don't know if it's because of some you know the way the industry works or the kind of things that you need to know but what were the challenges you faced as a woman in tech and also as an entrepreneur throughout your journey so basically when i started um i remember going to this conference it was a telecon conference and uh, it was just me and a room full of men in business suits so mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, that's when it really hit me because I'd just come home uh, after doing my master's. Yeah. But, you know, this is a very, very male dominated <laughs> space. Um, yes. But from then on, actually, I've tried very hard to have a very specific culture at Five Rivers. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have been able to create a very friendly um, and um, I would say almost like a family here. Yeah. Um, and over the years, I've had the opportunity of working with lots of wonderful women um, and, you know, kind of supporting them throughout their um, stages in life, hmm. because um, fortunately or unfortunately, I mean, it's just a fact of life that in our society, women are, you know, supposed to do certain things. Um, you get married, you have kids, um, and all of those are actually pretty significant life changes, if you think about it. Yes. Men don't have to go through that. Men True. don't have to get married and adjust to a whole new family or, you know, have children and adjust to that. So I think uh, companies don't really think about that maybe um, hmm. or maybe as, even as um, like a work society, we don't really think about that. Uh, I yes. think women need some extra support over there. 
Hmm. But otherwise, um, I found that there is really no difference. Um, uh -huh. In the work output, um, I actually find women to be slightly more detail oriented. Agreed. So, uh, yes. Our yes. Um, QA department has always been mostly female uh, and currently yes. is also headed by a female. So right. I think there are some things that women are uniquely good at, just like, you know, yeah. men are uniquely good at some things. Um, but yes, women do need some extra support um, during this phase in their life where, you know, a lot of changes are happening. Yes. And that's, that's yeah. pretty much it. I mean, I think if they get that support, um, hmm. There is so much untapped potential here in Pakistan. I mean, yes. you think about the, how many women are there, but that's at least 50%, right, of your hmm. workforce. Yes. And if they're not working, you're losing 50% of your brain power and hmm. your educated class. And, and hmm. that's a huge waste. So I think that if, you know, we can figure out a way in which to support women um, through all the other duties that they have to fulfill, Hmm. Um, and we can make them part of the workforce. I think they're a wonderful, wonderful addition. True. No, actually, you're right. I remember, I think, two, three of my job interviews. The final question was, what if you get married in the next two, three months and you tell us, we, I don't want to work with you anymore? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think we need to sort of be a little more. I mean, you also need to be open towards the idea of women generally wanting to focus on their career more than you know their personal lives and getting married because that's literally all we focus on in this country at least so uh, do you think that uh, you know uh, since the past few months or a few years the condition the safety conditions for women in Pakistan have they just keep getting worse do you think that's uh, a reason why women don't really, you know, want to go out there or are hesitant towards going out there and making a career for themselves? So I wouldn't say that things are necessarily getting worse. I would say that most stories are making it uh, to the masses. Yes. And uh, they are being, you know, uh, documented and they are being shared, yeah. which I think is, is, is a great thing because once we start sharing what is happening, then we can raise a voice, you know, against it and yes. we can start fixing it, which we have also seen in the past. I mean, there have been some terrible, terrible things that have happened, but because women spoke up, there are, you know, measures that are being taken against those things also. Yes. So I think that it's more of a case of the stories making it to the media and making it to the people, which is a great thing because that's how change happens. Hmm. Uh, in the tech sector, um, I think there are a lot of places to work now that have a wonderful culture um, hmm. and work yeah. culture and just, you know, generally, I think women feel um, pretty safe. So I, I wouldn't yeah. say that that's a huge deterrent because whenever I've sat down with all of my, uh, you know, employees on Women's Day or other hmm. you know, uh, days when we, you know, have a discussion about their life or their careers, etc., it's more of them needing support through a few life-changing you know decisions yes. like okay I've, I'm getting married I need a little bit of time to you know get uh, settled in this new family mm. or into this new role or I'm uh, you know expecting and I'm going to be a mother and I need a little bit of extra time so um, which men usually don't need right because yes. it's, I mean the physical changes really they are not going through Yes. So I think that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Uh, that's mm. all the support that they need. I mean, from their family and their workplace. True, that, that's actually, the only yes. Thing ever come up? I think workplaces are fine. Like even if I look at myself, it's not actually my workplace that I'm scared of. It's probably you know the route that I'm taking and coming from my home, taking a thirty minute drive, and during that thirty minute yeah. drive, I think I check my locks around six times. <laughs> in the car because I'm alone so I believe workplaces etc they're great but uh, just with the stories coming out I've also seen women being hesitant even myself I feel hesitant going out uh, you know after 9 p.m literally or if I have something at work even if I have to stay at work late I have to you know get someone to then be with me just because I'm a woman so I don't know. I felt that a lot of, you know, where we feel restricted towards a lot of things that we can do to grow. 
just because of the current uh, situation that we have in the country. Very true. Uh, very true. I think the commute and the distances, um, mm. especially in the you know big cities like Karachi, Lahore, etc., are pretty bad. But then I think technology has also kind of helped out there a little. Yes, because a lot. If we're working round the clock, I mean, all of our clients are based in the U.S. or yes. you know Europe, and there's yes. a time difference. So we already have a very flexible like work situation Workers. where people, yes. you know work from home. Mm. They can take that walk yeah. from home. Um, so I think all of these things, um, the virtual aspect of it is kind of helping um, yeah. people be more present without, you know, hmm. um, taking risks that they don't feel that they want to take. Yes. Um, and also, I mean, I'm, I'm generally a very hopeful person. Um, I try and think positively. Uh, I, I do think things will get better. Because I think there are a lot of we women now. We should. We should yeah. think positively. There are a lot of women now who are coming out and who want things to change. Yes. And yes. if we are 50% of Pakistan, at least, mm -hmm. then we can make it happen. Definitely. Yes. You're right. So uh, the next thing I was going to ask was that since, uh, you know, a lot of areas still in Pakistan, places like KPK, etc., there's a very less a lower percentage of women who are working to earn money. But uh, have you felt that in the past uh, few months, ever since, you know, COVID happened and people started working from home, it has opened up opportunities for women, especially, you know, the ones who live in such areas and have certain restrictions on on them whether they're cultural uh to not actually be able to go out and work yes yes i think covid even though it's been a terrible terrible time uh, a lot of us you know have lost family members or we've been ill we've been restricted um movement has been restricted but i do think that it's been positive in the way that it's kind of accelerated the digital growth Yes. that otherwise would have taken more time to come around. Mm. Um, I am an avid online shopper, but <laughs> I mean, since COVID has started, I have discovered so many young women doing yes. so many incredible things. I mean, yes. I was just blown away by the quality of some of the stuff, you know, mm. that usually one would say, you know, when I go abroad, I'll get this or I'll get that. Mm. I, I really have had no need to get anything. Yeah. Uh, from art supplies, because I, I mean, I love painting, to candles, mm. to home decor items, to everything. It has just mm. been an incredible experience. And I mean, it gave me a good excuse also for all my shopping because I started turning <laughs> it to research. Um, but uh, we are actually going to launch um, and are very close to launching an online marketplace uh, right. for women. Uh, yes, for women and artisans who are making things and manufacturing things in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And uh, because what I see again, what I see there is you can't do everything yourself. Yes. You can't manufacture something or make something and then market it and then make your website and then, you know, deal with your finances and your operations. It's, it's too much. So with mm -hmm. this marketplace that we're going to call Pakistan Creates, um, we want there to be the tech infrastructure for small businesses, okay. the infrastructure that they need. So they can sign mm. up, they can create their shop. It will be a website. Um, we'll take care of the payment method, et cetera. We are not charging anything for people to sign up. There are no commissions on sales. Everything goes wow. straight to the uh, seller. Uh, and we're just hoping that if we get enough um, good stuff in one place, mm a lot of traffic will start coming in and a lot of, of these smaller artists will start getting discovered. Um, and so hopefully, I'm hoping, uh, we already have quite a few people signed up, that it's going to be a very, very special, special thing. Because all the people that I've spoken to, whether they've been you know, in Pakistan or even expats, yes. they're like, you know, there's no one place where we can go to, to see mm. what's happening. Yes, what are true. people creating in Pakistan? True. Whether they're dupattas on hand looms or candles or beauty products now, just mm. wonderful bath and body products, yeah. uh, home decor stuff, you know. Um, I even ran into a girl who's making watercolors here from scratch. Really? Herself. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, there's so much that is happening from handmade paper. I mean, you name it and we're doing it. Yes. But the problem is that you have to go out and look for it. 
Hmm. There's not any one place where you can go and say, okay, you know, I want to buy something for my home. Um, yes. I want to get bed sheets. Okay, hmm. what all do I have to choose from? Hmm. Or even actually now I was pretty surprised online classes. That's yes. become such a trend from creative classes to cooking classes to, you know, calligraphy to anything, learn languages. True. So I, I, I basically think that we need this library where people can come and they know that the sellers have been vetted because mm. I, I, that's one thing that I think people are very scared of as a yes. buyer. When you go to a platform where there are lots of sellers, you're mm. like, you know, I don't know if they're actually selling what they say they're selling. Yes. I True. mean, I, I've, I've had terrible experiences where I've ordered books and I've just yeah. gotten a book back in the mail. The title was not the same. And it's really? a thing, yeah, it's a thing to explain wow. to the seller that I would not just order a generic book I wanted that <laughs> book wow so, you know, yeah. yeah so the one one really big thing that we're doing is we're going to vet all our sellers on Pakistan creates there's Great. going to be a quality assurance uh, cycle mm -hmm. that we will follow without which you can't sell because I think that the trust factor is very very important both for the seller and the buyer they yes. both need to trust uh, each other of course and so yes. hopefully we're going to be able to create that bridge and I'm actually really, really excited about this project. Yeah, no, it sounds great. It sounds great because I used, I would never shop online before all of this pandemic happened. But now I think everywhere I go, I have like every time I look at my phone, there is a, you know, I see an ad and I, I'm ordering something new and every day you know, something is coming. So I think that would be great if you can, you know, sometimes you want to look for something, you even Google it, but you can't really find the pages that are in your country. That's also because of, you know, their SEO and everything. So I think yeah. this is a great idea to be able to find everything in one place and, you know, well trusted from trusted uh, sellers as well. Uh, so I, so when COVID happened, obviously everybody went to working from home and uh, like you also mentioned your company as well. And most software houses are still, you know, working remotely. So how was uh, this whole transition for you? Because even our company focuses on remote work, Convo is all about communicating well. So what were the challenges you faced during your, you know, transition from uh, your entire team's uh, transition and uh, did it affect the productivity of your team or not how did you guys cope with that so in the beginning um, mm. I think it was a very novel thing to do and everyone was kind yeah. of trying it out and there was this level of excitement that you know it, it, it's a new thing that we're trying mm. but I think as time has gone on um, especially here at Five Rivers our work environment mm. and culture and interactions the everyday interactions are a huge part of who we are yes. um, and yeah. I personally actually really miss coming to the office so you know I've, I've created a hybrid model for myself where you know I'm available certain hours in the office mm. <clears throat> as mm. have a lot of team members actually because our culture, it's kind of like work and play. So hmm. we, we play a lot from table tennis to, you know, yeah. food festivals, to barbecues, to cricket. And you can't really have that unless, you know, you have a few people around you. Um, so work-wise, I think it's been okay. Um, hmm. It's been easier to manage also in the fact that, I mean, with the time zone difference, it's easier, obviously, for people yes. to take late night calls from home and all of that. But I think all of us are now missing that social aspect. That, that's actually the real thing that we're missing. It's not the work. Um, mm. that, that's all going well. We have wonderful tools for communicating. Um, you know, project managers are managing their stuff fine. But that the social aspect is missing. And so, you yes. know, we're trying to kind of bring that back a little bit with a hybrid model so that, you know, people get to meet each other, form connections, really understand each other and you know mm, have true. friends here at work yes. so we're now trying to at least incorporate some social activities uh, into our calendar uh, mm. and obviously we've been pushing all of our uh, employees to get vaccinated so yes. that uh, you know yeah yeah because you know that there's some you know some people are a little hesitant they don't know you know they're very about hesitant all the vaccines yes so uh, you know all of our entertainment options mm. are only open to 
obviously employees who are vaccinated right. because we want yes. to make sure that everybody is safe. Yes, true. But and I think outdoor work, activities, work. yeah, outdoor activities are fine. And and now the weather is getting better, so yes, hopefully, finally, you know, we be able to have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, we have employees now who were recruited during the pandemic, and mm. they've never seen, you know, the company, the company, like, yes, functioning as a whole that way, as a yes. as a family, as I like to mm. call it. Um, so you know, we are trying to do some you know trips or team building activities, etc., mm. where they can you know get to form those connections that yes. are very important. Yes, true. No, I think I feel actually I feel really bad for you know the uh, people who are just graduating or the ones who are now you know starting their jobs because they did not get that experience of you know the last year of university and now they're not getting a yeah. proper uh, office environment and a proper experience of a professional life. So that is one thing that our generation is lacking now and but let's hope this also works out i think we have we're, we're still we have that ability to adopt two different things we're doing fine <laughs> uh, so uh, do you think that there's a lot of women out there who aren't literate enough to you know go out there find themselves jobs be educated or even know the importance of education or a, a career so do you think we can somehow uh, do something to help these women grow uh, in terms of literacy, in terms of their careers? And uh, how do you think we can also, you know, apart from trying to help them, how can we encourage them to actually be out there and become somebody? So um, I was born into a family that is obsessed with books. Uh, my parents mm. uh, started this NGO, um, Alif Lela Book Bus Society, and they run libraries okay. here in Lahore. I've heard so, about it. Yeah, so growing up, I mean, it, it was all about you give a child a book and you teach mm. a child to read and you open the whole world for them. Yes. So um, from what I've experienced myself, um, because we've done excuse me sorry uh -huh. we've done outreach in you know bastis and villages children have that thirst for learning in mm. fact recently my mother's launched this project in um, balochistan where she's doing uh, camel libraries in different villages where um, oh, i mean they're really remote right so the children don't have access to any storybooks or you know mm. anything that's different um, and the footage that i've seen it's just so inspiring because the kids wait for the camel and when the camel comes in, you know, they, they take books off the camel, they're friends with the camel. And that's just a sweet idea. Their, yeah. Yes. And just the spark in their eyes. Yeah. When they you know, pick up a book and they read a book. Um, I, I totally agree with you that literacy and um, education is very, very important. But I think there also technology is going to play a huge role as, mm. um, you know, the infrastructure improves. There's going to be a lot of uh, online education opportunities also for women. Yes. And I think here it is our responsibility, yours, mine, all women who are working and who know the power of literacy and the power of having a job of your own to help actually, you know, yes. to create some sort of change. Um, mm. In villages, whether it's, you know, helping women. Um, fine tune their products because a lot of these women, even if they're not literate, they have incredible skills. So yes. they're e either doing basket weaving or, you know, they are doing embroideries or so many, so many other things. Mm. So, you know, even that, if, you know, one can wow. kind of streamline and design yes. things well and mm. give them a place to sell. I mean, that's also a huge thing for most yes. of these uh, yes. women in these areas and I think later on I mean in villages etc all you need is one room and maybe yeah. a couple of computers and a good internet connection yes. and one can create these informal schools where women can actually yeah. get to get to teach each other true in so fact I just what, yesterday what, I saw something like this there were it was a village and there were little girls and they all had some laptops and I, I don't remember the name exactly, but they were actually asking people to donate their old laptops or anything that, you know, books, et cetera. So. Yeah. So I think connectivity 
if you give, I mean, all of these places a good internet connection and you give them laptops yes. that will enable them to get online. I think the communities themselves, I mean, maybe I will know how to do one thing. You will know how to do another thing. But if we mm. get together, you know, we will be able to, you know, do more than separately. Yes. So True. even if these women get together with a laptop and an internet connection and, you know, just if they want to learn, you don't mm. need a formal system now to learn yes uh, true. education is not something that you can only get in a school or you can only get from you know eight to two uh, mm. it's anytime anywhere we're all learning all the time yes so i think we just need to open the doors because i think the thirst and the hunger it's it's there they mm. want to they mm. just we just need to show them how that's it true true so i think that brings us towards the end of our conversation and it was lovely talking to you. Thank you. I really like, I personally really like the topic we chose. So I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much for taking out the time for Convo. And I hope I'll, I'll speak to you soon sometime. It was wonderful speaking to you too. And thank you for reaching out. This has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.